we're back. <laughs> How is everybody doing? Uh, did you enjoy those advertisements? It's How, the first time I'm, we've done that. What were they? I'm dying to know. It was, I don't know, maybe you guys can tell us. I think there was something about soda involved. What? Yeah. Like um, baking soda? Those of you who are asking about Dice Camera Action, they did their episode on Sunday live at TwitchCon. Uh, there was some some mess up, so we're trying to get the video of that and post that on our YouTube uh, page uh, as soon as possible. Uh, but Dice Camera Action will be back tomorrow uh, at 4 p.m. Pacific time with a new episode, uh, and I'm sure Chris will want to do it. Uh, Mr. Chris Perkins will give you as much of a recap as possible as what happened uh, because he's you know always sensitive. He's nice for making sure you guys get that. Um, uh, and the other news, there is Dice Camera Action in podcast form uh, on audio on Dungeon Delve very right now. I guess the first episode of this season is up now, and we'll be adding more this week uh, and try to keep that as current as possible uh, as the weeks go by. And that's one of the fun things that Mr. Ryan Marth is going to be doing for us. Wow, Ryan. In addition to doing two podcast episodes a week. Busy. We're working him crazy. We're working him to the bone. It's not like you have a family bone. or anything. He's with, a, with a bone. Or like a other job. Wait. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to get right into calling Mr. Andrew Wilson, uh, no. since I told him we would call him Kevin. about a round three. Kevin. Kevin. Andrew. Who's Andrew? I don't know. You're not that good with names today. I know. I'm a little <laughs> bit frazzled. <laughs> you know, because they're not, they're not strange names. Like, they're all, like, common names. No. So, like, Kevin Wilson. It's right there in front of me. I should be able right, to read I'm... it. Apologies, Kevin. Uh, I make sure to call you Andrew Wilson uh, or Woodrow Wilson. Somebody called me Sherry in a meeting today. Oh. I was going to punch him in the eye. Like. What was that funny? <laughs> <laughs> Call him you too, really? Was it Ryan? Was Ryan the funny one? No. Uh, all right. So, yeah. Let's mis- let's call up uh, Kevin Wilson right about now. Okay. Hello. Hello. How's it going, Kevin? I'm good. How are you? Good. So sorry for calling you, what, a half hour later. As things uh-huh. happen, we get behind schedule. Even with one interview, we're behind schedule. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. No worries. It's one of the fun things we do, right, Shelly? That's right. Hi, Kevin. <laughs> Howdy. So where where are we calling you from? Where are you? I'm in the Twin Cities. Ah, uh, yes. Nice. Minneapolis. St. Paul. That's where the twins play in baseball. <laughs> what's the, what's going on there in the Twin Cities? Oh, not a ton right now. It's just uh, starting to get cold, basically. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so As we, it should. We are calling you because you uh, design, your name is on the box. For I'm, we're looking at it right now. The Tomb of Annihilation board game uh, made by WizKids. Oh, yeah. How was it like uh, uh, working on that? It was a lot of fun. It was... Uh, it was kind of a, a fulfillment of a long time, you know, goal of mine, a dream of mine that I'd had for many years. Oh, that's cool. What I was that? To, uh, I always, I always wanted to do something officially Dungeons and Dragons with my oh. name on it. So nice. Well, you nailed it. Cross I'm a couple of things that off D&D the list. logo and your name very close together. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, to work for WizKids. <laughs> it's good working with them. Uh, Zev's a nice guy. And, they yeah. were all nice for me. I've heard a lot of good things about Zev as well. Is Zev the, because uh, uh, I've talked, we've talked to Justin Zoran mm-hmm. here on uh, the podcast. Is What is, what mm-hmm. capacity does Zev work? He's, does he manage uh, the Zev board was, games, I think? Um, I think so. He was, he was my, uh, he was my contact on the project and he does a lot of the board game stuff there. So Sweet. Uh, does he, is he a developer or is he just a, uh, uh, you know, getting it ready to go? Uh, it seemed like he, he seemed, I think he's doing development work there, and uh, he just does does a lot of stuff there. So, or as Mike Merles says, implementer. He yeah. calls it the 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 game implementer. The implementer. We're gonna work. Uh, game implementer. All yeah. Right. Instead of developer, he just didn't like that that term for various reasons. But yep. uh, it makes uh, sense. I like it. I like because they're, they're the people who take the initial design, uh, yeah. and then and, and and make it right, make it real. So yeah. you were the uh, initial designer uh, on something like this, right? Right. Um, of course, I'm not the designer of the actual system. Uh, that's been around for several uh, previous releases already. So um, I made the most of the content for it in this version of it, basically. Right. I guess that's true. Than different than a lot of other board games, where you you know you're not necessarily working within a framework. You're 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 you know creating some new mechanics. But in this, like the mechanics were all generally there, and then you could iterate upon them. Right. 
Exactly. So for folks who don't know about the uh, adventure system, uh, how would you describe it to them? Um, well, it's, uh, it's sort of like uh, having a dungeon master that's run by a deck of cards, kind of. Mm. Um, and the board game is you, you explore, you go through there, and you're kind of uh, on a timer sort of in the game in that the slower you go, the more bad things happen. <laughs> um, and so you have to hurry up, but at the same time, every time you hurry up, more monsters appear, and so you're becoming overwhelmed by that. And that's not so the bad sort things of, uh, that would happen? No, there's other bad <laughs> things. No, that seems different, pretty bad. Different bad, things. different bad things. Well, you're choosing which flavor of bad thing you want to deal with at right. the time. So. Um, but it's it's more about the tactical elements of D&D, &D, and uh, it's a dungeon masterless game. So it's you know it's got some versatility and some... some mm -hmm. uh, some different strengths as a result of that. And being an adventure system game, does that make it makes it playable with the other adventure system games like uh, Temple of Elemental Evil or Castle Ravenloft or Wrath of a Shardalon? Uh, yeah, it's it's compatible with those. It might take a little bit of work in places, but it's it uses the same core system, and so most things are easily compatible, and some need a little bit of work. Very cool. What uh, other than, of course, the content being you know Tomb of Annihilation theme? There's Roz Nisi on the box. All the miniatures and monsters are uh, are all from there. But are there any different mechanics uh, from that that you that you introduced in, into this version? Uh, yeah, I had a couple of a uh, couple of fairly fun elements they got to introduce um, uh, because of the uh, the ultimate bad guys in the scenario. Of course, in the in the campaign, um, I introduced a spell deck which is basically a way for the monsters in the game to cast spells at the players for the most part. Mm. Um, Cause you want, you want something like that in the, in there for, you know, various, uh, uh, various uh, big bads. I won't name here just in case it's a spoiler. You can name them. I can't I, imagine. I, he's, well, he's, you know, up, that's he's up on the wall behind us. So I think people, uh, all right, Someone fair enough. Of the but, um, Bob is uh, we call him, right? <laughs> <laughs> so people don't get but, him. Um, but, you know, he needed to be able to, to unleash a big uh, hail of spells at the players and such. So I really I, I made, made a system for that to happen. Um, and I kind of combined several of the, er, of the trap systems from the earlier uh, board games into one system to kind of make it to where it was. There were some simpler traps and then there's some more complicated traps as well. Uh, because, of course, with Tomb of Annihilation, there's a lot of traps uh, involved, especially in the tomb itself. A mm. few, maybe. One or two. Yeah. And uh, the other fun thing I got to do was that I got to introduce a couple of new classes to the, the game that hadn't been done in the adventure system before. So there's a bard and a druid in there. So. Oh, that is neat. Yeah, I played with, uh, uh, what's her name, Birdsong a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Nice. Oh. Yeah, nice to have some support characters. You like some the bars. Tabaxi. I do like, and I like a bard. So it was like this perfect. Because uh, you're a make, theater person. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Everybody drink. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, what was it like? I mean, how, did you know what your what characters you were going to start with when you started playing, or did you come up with that through play? Um, it was partly I. I you know, uh, WizKids kind of sent me a list of the miniatures that were going to be out, and I kind of had to work within a certain framework, had to use the miniatures that they knew they were going to do. Um, but at the same time, I had kind of free reign within that. Um, and once I saw that there was a bard in there, I knew I wanted to do a bard for sure. Um, again, that's one of my, my favorite classes that I like. Yeah. And it just it hadn't been done before, so I thought there was a, a, a place I could like explore the mechanics a little bit. Um, and of course, you know, when you, when you read through all the materials for the, for the campaign, you know, uh, artist Simber and, uh, dragon bait are in there a lot. And I really wanted to get them in. Um, there's a couple of my, my favorite old forgotten realm characters. Did you read uh, ring of winter and a lot of the novels that were set in Schultz back in oh, the yeah. 90s? Back, back in the nineties, back in the day. Yeah, yeah. What is your history with D and D? Uh, How I've did you get playing, started playing? Well, I haven't I haven't been playing many of the newer editions, but I did start when I was about eight years old hmm. um, with the the old Red Box yep. uh, for for Basic Edition, and uh, played up through college. 
um, play through third edition, and mostly just because I've been busy with board games is why I haven't continued to role play as much these days. Mm. But that's just you know my professional career. I don't have as much time that to to do the other stuff these yeah. days. Did your D and D history kind of inform your your career path? Is that why you became a game designer? Uh, yeah, originally I worked on role playing games over at uh, Alderac Entertainment Group. And uh, eventually, I kind of moved over into board games. Yeah, you have a, a lot of um, credits to your name that I was I I I didn't know when I was doing a little background on you. Uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, Shelly Shelly paid for an FBI background. I did. On you. Yep. Uh, we need and to all talk that came about... back were all of your game design. Yeah, credits. it was so weird. Like, live a little, Kevin. I mean, come on. <laughs> 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 oh, you have a lot of impressive titles. Um, what? How did you get into this uh, industry? Um, I used to work uh, part-time at a game store originally, uh, and I was doing a Dungeons and Dragons campaign there, and I had like a Kinko's book uh, <laughs> that I put together for my campaign, and my players would all get a copy of it when they played it, and it was the Isles of Treachery, mm. uh, which is like this piratey uh, tropics campaign. It's a good title. And it so happened that a, a certain RPG company was working on a pirate-themed RPG at the time, and one of the regulars at the store was a graphic designer there. Oh. And he recommended to me that I should try and do an internship with them. And I did, and I got into the industry. Uh, and, you know, that's that's kind of been where I've been ever since. Internship, that's where it's at. <laughs> Game store, retail. That's what Kyle said it's like too. this crazy backdoor uh, oh, way to get in, right? Yep. Right place, right time, too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, this was just a lucky break. That is cool. So you've, but you've been doing more board game design since then. What what do you think are the differences between like an RPG design and and, and board game design, for your brain? Uh, well, it's it's uh, a board game. You're you're taking a much more active role in presenting the experience to the players. I think in a lot of ways with with a role playing game, I was always more about trying to create a framework for players to make their own stuff within. As much as possible, but but yeah. board games are kind of more, uh, a little bit more preset. Not not completely, but you know they don't have that same kind of freewheeling thing that the RPGs have. Freewheeling, I like that. I feel like I would want as a game designer to be I freewheeling. Mean, no, I would actually. I would want the board game, something that's a little bit more structured. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. But Maybe then that's again, why you I've, work on board games. I don't know, because I listen to them talk, board mm -hmm. game designers, and I'm like, I, woo, woo, over my head. There's a lot of crazy stuff you have to... <laughs> is it, like, and especially this is a board game that's playable with one person up to, what is it, five people? Mm hmm So, I mean, to me, that scale just seems like that's just complicated. How are you making a game that for one person or three people or five people are all going to enjoy? How do you do it? <laughs> Well, again, like in this case, it was uh, it was mostly all set up for me ahead of time, thankfully. Um, scaling is always for a different number of players can can be tricky. So, um, but I was glad it was already it was already put together for me. I've had to do it a couple times. Yeah. And a lot of times I've cheated and just said, you know, well, use four heroes or whatever, you know. Right. Four and only four. Mm -hmm. So, how did you get involved in this project? Did we talk about that? Not yet. Let's talk about that. They said, hey, Kevin. We know. We got a game for <laughs> um, you. <laughs> uh, yeah, basically, uh, Zev just approached me and asked me if I wanted to work on the next Dungeons & Dragons board game. And I was like, well, yeah, of course. <laughs> so what, you and Zev have worked together in the past, or how did he, how did he know to come to you? Um, well, we're, we're, we've known each other in the game industry in the past. Um, I've pitched him a couple games here and there. And, you know, he's he's a friendly guy. He knows a lot of people uh, just in general. And we've run into each other at conventions and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, Do you work independently or are you part of, do you have your own company or what? Uh, well, I used to work for Fantasy Flight Games for about 10 years. But oh, okay. for the last five years, I've been freelance. Uh, so I have my own sort of one-man company. And I just consult for other companies now and design games for them. Oh, great. So what are some of your favorite board games out there? 
Uh, let's see, my favorite board games. Uh, my group really enjoys, and I really enjoy, uh, Battle Stations 2, second, second edition. Uh, Battle Stations, a lot of fun. It's sort of like Star Trek in a box. Um, we play a lot of Cosmic Encounter. Uh, that's a game that's been around forever, and mm-hmm. it's just really a lot of fun and very chaotic and fun. Um... I also uh, really enjoy an older game called uh, El Grande, Mm -hmm. uh, which is a uh, kind of one of the earlier European style board games. Um, And it really is just very tightly put together. And it's very, it's just kind of uh, one of those games that you just have to admire the craftsmanship on it. It's a board game designer's board game. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, I like that. That's cool. Uh, so back to the Tomb of Annihilation board game. Uh, what? Uh, I, correct me if I'm wrong. Is this have all the Adventure Systems games said that you can play with one player? I think so. Have they? I think so. Yeah, I think that's kind of a selling point for yeah. a lot of folks because I, I know mm-hmm. people who, you know, it's hard for them to get together a D and D camp, you know, campaign. It's hard for them to even get, you know, a group of people to do, you know, playing board games in general. And and here's a way that you can. Go through the scenarios and 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 uh, uh, make some tactical decisions without needing, you know, uh, opponents or even cooperative folks with you. Hi. Yeah, they uh, they have a they have an interesting system in there where it, it drives the way the monsters work and they kind of move from tile to tile as opposed from space to space, which kind of simplifies how they operate. Right. Which actually makes it all hold together, I think, in a nice way. Yeah. I think it's also a good introduction to D&D as well. It's kind of, it gives you like the flavor and the feeling of being in a D&D world and playing a D&D character, but not, it takes some of the mystique away. Yeah, right. I mean, and then, you know, the trade-off is that you don't have as much story or role-playing right. stuff going on, but you do get to embody mm-hmm. that character yeah. and have some kind of, you know, dramatic moments where you need to roll the 20 in order to defeat the monster at the right moment or everybody's going to die. Yeah, it's everybody's a bit more, die. it's a bit more bite-sized. You don't, like I said, you don't quite have the open range of possibilities with the role-playing game, but but there's more uh, there's more to keep you on track, I guess, more rails to keep you going. Yeah, yeah. So did you ever, in your uh, D&D history, encounter the Tomb of Horrors? Oh, yeah, we, we went through it once. How did that go? Once, once. <laughs> yeah, it, it didn't go, it didn't go well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard anyone say, like, yeah, Went through it. Dungeon Masters. Fine. Dungeon oh, Masters yeah. are like, oh, God, it's so much fun. Right. <laughs> yeah. Did you put your hand in the uh, uh, the Green Devil face? The fog? Thankfully, no. That wasn't that wasn't my character anyways. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> so are you going to get back into D&D now that uh, you've had your appetite wet again? I will have to see. I do like the, the looks of the 5th edition stuff. It's more a matter of just finding time these days. Yeah, exactly. Do you have a new project that you're working on right now that you probably can't talk about? <laughs> Shelly's trying to just hire say yes you. Or no. She's trying to hire you. She's are you busy right now? <laughs> <laughs> we got this pitch uh, for you. What are you doing for the next nine months? <laughs> well, I usually I I usually put a game out every two months or so. Actually, what? These days. What? Yeah. Just you? How are you doing this? I just I keep busy. But how are you? How do you keep coming up with? I mean, with all the board games that are coming out there, I remember seeing some statistic about, like, how many games were even... Board games were on Kickstarter at any given time, and it was some crazy number. Yeah. And a lot of them get made, and a lot of them... like It's a board game renaissance now. There's board games in every store. What? How do you keep the ideas coming, or how do you keep things fresh? Or is it really just, like, there's only, like, a really three really good ideas out there, but people keep iterating on those ideas. And like, w- what's the deal? It's a worker placement game set in Fantasia <laughs> with a die roll random mechanic. Uh, right. I mean, at some point, are we going to run out of ideas? Like, what is? how are we making so many board games? Well, it's just uh, the, the, the Kickstarter thing has kind of opened the floodgates a bit for folks. Just there's a lot more companies making games now, and a lot more companies are looking at board games as the place to be in the industry yeah um and so there's a lot more opportunity to make games 
And as for coming up with ideas and stuff, I'm never I'm never short on ideas. I'm always short on time to make them, honestly. Yeah. Wow. That's a good problem to have. Right. Yeah. D- does it feel like you ever get like a little bit too like mashed up? Like like I mean, I was joking when I mentioned that, but it does feel like most board game pitches I hear now uh, are like similar to, to movies where it's like, hey, it's Die Hard meets, you know, on, but on a train. You know, and like, it's, does it get <laughs> like that when you're talking about board games? And is that a bad thing? It can. Uh, I think that's just, it's important to always keep a clear idea of what you're doing and, and make sure that there's always something that makes your game stand out, basically. And that can be like mechanics, it can be a license, it can be, you know, art. It, you know, it, it doesn't matter what it is or is it better? Not really. It's just as long as you have, as long as you have a good idea what that hook is going to be, I think. Hmm. That's the main thing. Is it different for each concept? Yeah, it it changes from from game to game for sure. Cool. So uh, are you, are you mostly publishing games like through like do you work with publishers, existing publishers, or do you publish under your your own company? Uh, I strictly work with public with okay. other publishers at this point. Um, I'm I'm a game designer. I don't want to be a publisher myself. Oh yeah, there's that's a whole uh, bag of tricks you don't need to worry about <laughs> mm-hmm. no it's good just to focus on on the game design itself yeah absolutely sorry i was phasing out for a second because we we're dealing with some sound things so no i apologize i was shelly was running that show what's happening what were you guys talking I, about i don't know you're like pointing behind me like, what? well i think there's some there? sound there's some sound bleed coming over so i just want to make sure whoever's making the sound oh, that wasn't getting, that getting on the mics i apologize for all of you on twitch that you could barely hear something that might have happened over the microphones <laughs> it happens <laughs> What is that? Oh, they're li- oh my God! We're both live. We're two live crew right now. Here, oh, good one! Here in the w- Wizard of the Coast office. Uh, all right. Well, then game on. Uh, so that means we need to be louder <laughs> <laughs> and not stop talking the entire time. Uh, so, Kevin, what's your favorite? Uh, no, we already did that. Kevin, what's <laughs> what's your what's what's a game pitch for a Dungeons and Dragons uh, board game that you've loved would love to see in the future? You can't. Ask them that. Is that is that a bad thing? Is that, you, I don't know. No, because you can't. We don't answer that, Kevin. Uh, we really okay, do. Have I won't. <laughs> I won't. I won't touch that one. Great. Well, we what know you're you, thinking about it. Yes. So that's a good question, but we just can't. On the mics. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I guess I mean, that makes like, sense. Like, what if he like pitched an idea and something we were already making, and then he's like, oh. I pitched him that idea on Dragon Talk. Well, but, like, but if you <laughs> mail it to yourself. Does that <laughs> remember that? I think I've done that. Does that help? Oh, no. I mailed myself like a short story when I was seventeen. Yeah, like I copyrighted somebody's it. Somebody's gonna try to steal my work. No, I guess that's a good point. But I feel like there's such a, a there's there, the board games and Dungeons and Dragons have such crossover yeah. that there's like it's rife for for fun things. Yeah, like ba- Betrayal of Baldur's like Gate. Betrayal of Baldur's Gate is a good example. Yeah. Have you played that one, Kevin? It's been out for like I two weeks. Yet. I mean, come on. No, I, I haven't yet. No, sorry. <laughs> Well, I played the uh, the original game. It was ba- the the board game. It was based on Betrayal originally. at House on the Hill. Yeah, I've played that a few times. Yeah, what do you think as a board game designer? I know That's it's like just game. rife with things that designers just want to like oh fix and pick <laughs> at, but it's a fun game it does uh it has a lot of variety to all the different haunts and everything and that's I think that's a lot of fun it's yeah very cool yeah. So what do you credit this whole like board game resurgence towards? Because I mean, it's it's kind of everywhere. Like we were saying, like Kickstarter or, you know, when you walk into Target, it has a huge board game display now. Barnes and Noble, like stores, Best Buy wants to get into board games, and I mean, there's board game cafes are on the rise. There's just everybody's playing board games. Now. There's all these podcasts about it. There's like podcast <laughs> people are always talking about them. There's live streams of board games. What is happening? What What do you think is going on with, like, why are people putting their phones down and tablets down, except for Greg Tito, and playing, <laughs> and playing board games I, again? Honestly, uh, I, I think it's that people are struggling and looking around for ways to, to reconnect with each other, yeah, in a face to face manner. And board games are a very nice structured way to do that. Whereas, you know, you may not have a place to go. You may not have activities to do with your friends necessarily, but here's something you can do, and you can spend two hours doing it. Right. And you all know why you're going to be there, and it gives you something to do while you're chatting and catching up on the latest news or whatever. 
yeah. it, it just provides a, a framework to the evening, you know? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. That's my reason, too. <laughs> We're on the same page. It's, it's easy to drink while playing a board game. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And or do other things. No. But yeah, right. Um, so, yeah, you mentioned that you go to a lot of conventions, and I'm sure uh, a lot of people ask this, uh, but it, say people wanted to get into designing games. What's the, what's the advice that you would give them uh, to start their career off? Mm, uh, if you want to design games, my advice is, well, A, to play a lot of games, and B, to find games that upset you, that, that you think are not very good, and look at them and see how you would change them and how you would fix them. Mm. Um, it's a good way to get thinking in that kind of mindset. Um, and then other than that, I would also recommend that people make sure they study their probabilities, their mathematics like that, because it's at the core of everything you're going to do. It is. That's the part that I'm always fascinated by when I hear game designers talk. Yeah. They're shouting out numbers and percentages and blah, 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 boop, 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 boop. I'm like, I'm okay. That seems like your interpretation of their of their conversations. That's what they talk about. That's exactly <laughs> what they sound like. Robots. They're basically R two D two and C three PO. Yes, and they yeah. even move their arms in that weird way. <laughs> they also, and then they just start dancing the robot like they're actually doing it. Yes, yeah. game designers are robots. I can see. Would that. you agree, Kevin? You are a robot. <laughs> is that well, how you know? Is that how you got started? Was by taking a game that you know you wanted to improve the design of and make your house rules and? Yes, it was Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> I, that's that is exactly how I got started. Was my house rule, my house rules for D and D. Oh, it really was. Well, there you go. Yeah. What what were they? What were some of the fun rules? I uh, changed the way. Well, I remember I was doing a like a pirate campaign at the time, uh, and so I changed the way armor worked in it, and I changed uh, the different races, the way they worked, and did a whole bunch of different stuff. I had that 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 Kinko's book was full of the house rules for the for the campaign. Do you, Do you still, still have? have... <laughs> Jinx, you owe us your Kinko's book. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still have it? Do you still refer back to that as the 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 Bible for your your nascent pirate campaign that you're gonna you know start up anytime now? <laughs> I, I do still have I do still have it. I keep it over my shelf there. Oh, that's nice. That is cool. So you can refer back to it. Are you still in touch with any of the people you used to play with? Occasionally, mostly on you know on social media on Facebook or whatever. We'll chat once in a while. Yeah. Do they know what, what a big deal in the game design world you are now? <laughs> Do they try to take credit for that? Like, if I didn't challenge you so much as a player, you never would have. <laughs> we made that house rule together. And now we, <laughs> you've stolen my See, idea. You, you should have careful. mailed it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So when you played D&D, &D, were you no. always the dungeon master, or did you ever try just were, as a player? Uh, I actually, I, I about half and half, I would say. I, I DM'd a lot early on, and then I wound up being a player more often later on. Did you favor the bards? Uh, just I had less. I played a lot of bards, a lot of rogues, a couple of wizards. Huh. What was it about the bards that you liked? Uh, I like I like the support roles like that. That was, I, I I also liked the bard being the jack of all trades kind of character. It was a lot of fun. I yeah. think I have to try a bard. You should try a bard. People really seem to like the bard. The fifth edition bard is really fun, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't, it, I mean, it is still a support role, but it, it has, you know, uh, uh, you can kit them out to be more, you know, basically as good of, as, a, a, as a fighter or as good as a wizard. Like, you can make it. It's fun. Mm -hmm. Do it. Uh, so for <laughs> folks who want to, uh, uh, you know, try the Tomb of Annihilation board game, what would you say is the, uh, the, the, the key selling points, as it were? Hmm. Um, well, let's see. Uh, like I said, there's the new. Uh, it, it, it's it's sort of like a, a D and D campaign in a box. Uh, you don't need a dungeon master. Uh, if you've played the previous ones, there's now uh, spell casting monsters, which is a new thing. Um, if you like the characters, uh, if you know Artist Simber or Dragon Bait, they're they're in there. They're a lot of fun. Um, and of course, my favorite thing is that I managed to work a uh, wand of wonder in there. So, ooh, cool! Oh, you worked a lot of cool stuff into the, this little box, this big box, actually. It's a huge. Well, box. you know, I had to had to fit my my favorite D and D stuff in there where I could. So. Yeah, well, that's part of the deal, I I would imagine. Plus, you got all those minis too. So even if you don't, you know, 
you know, you play the board game, but you can always add the minis into your into your campaign as well. Oh yeah, there's a ton of stuff you can use if you're running role playing games. A little bit of everything. A little bit. Yep. Good Sweet. deal. I've heard great great things about it, so we know it'll do well. It is doing well. It'll fly off the shelves. This is the one that there's a it's digital It's too heavy, version. though, so it'll be like a... Yeah, yeah. it'll be more like oof, off the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it is a very big box. And worth it, too. That's the cool part about no. it. You get so many components. You get so many uh, uh, inspiration points for, uh, you know, making your own stories. Cool. What's that? Something just cut out. Did we lose you? Are you there, Kevin? No. Oh, still okay. here. <laughs> Awesome. So where can people find out about you uh, online or uh, anywhere? Uh, do you have a website for, for your, your, your one-stop shop here? Um, mostly these days I'm on uh, Twitter mm-hmm. uh, as uh, Kevin Wilson 42 or if you search for me on the Board Game Geek website, you'll find my stuff there. I do have a website, but it tends to stay a little out of date. For, yeah, I, don't, I don't get to it as much as I should. So Nice. What kind of, Did you used to blog on there about game design and stuff like that? Yeah, and then I just got so so busy, I couldn't keep up with it. I feel like that happened to a lot of folks. It's good. It's a good problem now. <laughs> right? With that proliferation of, like, blogs and stuff in the mid-aughts there, everyone's mm-hmm. like, yeah, let's go do it, let's go do it. And then they all kind of lie follow now. What but, is that? Is yeah. it a live journal? And people used live to journal, yeah. right? Blogger. I was on Blogger. Yeah. Yeah, it was a thing. Huh. Yeah. But now, yeah, because of social media, you just, you know, you can update those things much, much yeah. quicker and easier without having to have a, a long written out essay about game design. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Although those are fun, too. Do you ever do any teaching? Is that something that um, interests you? Do you need an intern? <laughs> <laughs> I mostly, uh, most of my teaching goes on at, at game conventions or occasionally I'll like muse on game design on the, on the Twitter there. Mm-hmm. So when you're at um, conventions, are you doing like talks and panels about game design and whatnot? Yeah, a lot of the time when I'm there, that's that's what I'm doing. Oh, or cool. Running demos of games, that kind of thing. Got any of those coming up? Uh, yeah, next month I'll be at uh, BGG Con. Oh, oh good. that is that in? Where is that? It's in. Uh, it's Texas? Dallas, I think. Yeah. Dallas, Fort Fort Worth, somewhere around there. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that'll be exciting. Awesome. Well, uh, people in that area, look for, uh, for for Kevin Wilson and pick his brain about, gosh, I mean, you're making a board game every two months. That's a lot of board games. I know. <laughs> That's a good uh, production line you got going on there. Seriously. Well, I've been doing it for about 20 years now, so I've been, I got practice doing it, so. Nice. Well, we're really excited you were able to take the time and do uh, uh, this Tomb of Annihilation board game. I think it's Got a lot of the great things about the adventure in there too, and a lot of good things about the adventure system. So it's a good, it's a good mix. Yep. Oh, thank you. Cool. Thank you. Well, good talking to you, uh, and uh, we will catch up with you uh, when you design the next board game that has Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> on it, and you can cross Which is it probably off. Probably going to be in like five months. Five the months, you, right? The way you roll. Yeah, <laughs> we'll cross your another thing off the bucket list off your list then too. <laughs> All right. I've always Thank dreamed of having much. two products that have my name on it. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Kevin. Take it easy. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, sure. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Two a month? I mean, every two months? Every two months, getting a board game design out there is cray-cray. And you know the lead time on board games a lot. Like, he probably has games coming out, and he's like, oh, yeah. I know. I we were asking that. him all these things, and he's, like, filtering, like, I, I can't talk about that. Yeah. I can't talk about that. Or, yeah. I know. That's amazing. He probably worked on this, like, what, a year ago? Probably. At least. Yeah. Insane in the membrane. Right. Really cool. Really cool guy. I like that uh, uh, he's got all this wealth of, uh, of design behind him, right? I to like I- iterate and iterate. That we helped him realize a dream. We, you and I. It was me mostly me, though. Like, yep. let's, like, let's oh, call. no, I, I fully give you credit. <laughs> you know what? It was really Pelham did a good job of, good of job, making Pelham. sure that his name was on the box. And yep. Hillary. Hillary. And Hi- Hillary might have had something. Hillary Roth, uh, who uh, runs our relationship with WizKids. And who also probably has something to do with this fantastic song. And this voilette. Yeah. That's how you pronounce it in Germany. Did you guys realize it's got like D20 tooling on this side yeah, here? This wallet? Uh, crazy. It is pretty amazing. Uh, for those of you in podcast land, uh, there are some new fun D&D items you can get at Think Geek. But you cannot um, have this item, this wallet, until you are 14. Is that true? There's an. It says 14 plus. 14 and up. So, yeah. on your sure 14th why. birthday, this would be a great gift. But not before that. But if you're 13, nope. eh, 
wittier. No, that's irresponsible. Wittier. That would be very We don't want to teach responsibility of money that early. Do these have an age on them? <laughs> For the socks? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mostly because they're big. You, yeah, you must be at least, uh, you know. 14! 14! What is it about the 14? Don't know. Oh, I mean, you can play a right. board game at 12, you, know you can't wear d and I'm giving that to my six-year-old, and you're just going to have to you deal with it. You are irresponsible. You're going to have to deal with it, warning label man. Okay, right now, our QA safety people are like, Ugh. I know. They're already it's getting at me for the pitch us a D&D board game idea question. No, that's They're the, coming down now. Right now? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's, no. all, that's all the noise we hear from next door. It's the legal <laughs> like, team Ugh. getting ready. It's like a riot of lawyers. <laughs> I saved you. I you saved did. you really did. something. High five. Mm, yes. Always looking out for each other. Uh-huh. Rising up. That's what we do on no, Dragon very, Talk. It's very, it is a real thing because people will always, sometimes they'll just come up to me like, I have this idea for a game. And like, zip that. No, I, you're right. I didn't even think about it as I said the question, but you're right. Like that Literally. is, it's a, it's a morass of uh, legality that we must uh you know, forget forever yep, and ever. Yep. Um, all right, so we are uh, going to close out this outro right now Do by it. talking about where they can follow you, Shelly Moo. How about Shelly Moo on Twitter? That's you on the Twitters? That's what about me. your uh, your crazy board game company? What's that called? Avalon Hill. You may have heard of it. You may find Avalon Hill on Twitter as well, Avalon Hill 2, the number 2, or on Facebook. Nice. Do it. And you can find out about the Tomb of Annihilation board game uh, on our product page. It's on uh, the DungeonsandDragons.com website. But you can also check it out at WizKids, uh, their website, and uh, in your local game store. Just go check it out. Uh, And if they don't have it stocked, make sure you let them know that you want the latest adventure system game from WizKids and Dungeons & Dragons. It's called Tomb of Annihilation. It's got the crazy Raz Nisi on the cover. Did you guys see this? It's good stuff. Raz Nisi. Yeah, this is one of my favorite pieces of the marketing art. I tipped it over and then all the pieces I know. Like, blah, 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 blah. I know, it's terrible. Uh, so yeah, go check it out there. Um, you can follow me. I'm at Greg Tito. Ask me any questions about uh, Dragon Bait and what he likes to wear out on the town. Probably these socks. Probably these socks. Hey! And he likes the smell. Wait, no, that's, yeah, because he's, he's the guy who com- communicates through scent, right? Oh. We did a lore you should know on it. So, oh, then, yeah. So he likes to smell, like, smell socks, like socks. And uh, that means happiness to him. I'm going to say. That's sweet. Right? Because it reminds him of home. I love it. All right. We're going to close this out. Okay. I love Dungeons and Dragons. Me too. I love Shelly. I love Greg. We're going to say goodbye. Bye. See you next week. Bye bye. All right. Should we? In and mid. Yeah, let's do it. In and mid. Boop, bop, boo. You ready? Ready. Ready. I am going to say welcome to Dragon Talk. I'm Greg Tito. I'm joined by Shelly Mazanoble. I'm not going to sing, though. This I, Did I sing? I didn't even realize. Yeah, it was kind of a sing. Oh, that's, well, this is the official Dungeons & Dragons singing podcast, so we that's have to right. sing when we do it. Oh, boy. That's part of the deal. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Gotta do some lip syncing. We got a really cool, uh, fun uh, interview today. We're talking to uh, Kevin Wilson. Whose name is on this box. Name is on the box for the Tomb of Annihilation board game uh, produced by WizKids in collaboration with the Dungeons & Dragons team. It's all about uh, the Tomb of Annihilation story, but it uses the D&D Adventure System board game stuff. So we'll talk to him. He's a veteran of board game design as well as... As Dungeons and Dragons play, uh, yeah. so we'll pick up his brain on all those topics coming up. Uh, what are the fun things that are going on in the Dungeons and Dragons world? Well, you might ask. I asked. You asked? Yeah. And did you, I asked did for you ever a find few, it? though. Just a few good things. <laughs> How happening. many do you need? Wait, because you need to get to like a meeting, don't you? I have alerted them. I will be late. Nice. All right. So I'm going to do uh, only a few of them uh, because that's what Shelly needs. And I give, uh, no, I never found <laughs> this is getting crazy. <laughs> Uh, Extra Life. We should talk about Extra Life because it's for the kids. Uh, We are raising money for Seattle Children's Hospital as well as children's hospitals across the country uh, and the world by playing Dungeons & Dragons, doing what we do best. So on November 3rd and November 4th, we will be playing as much Dungeons & Dragons as possible uh, from some of our folks in the community as well as here uh, from the office and the Dungeons & Dragons team. Uh, Some of them will be at GameHellCon in Madison, Wisconsin, broadcasting live from there, uh, including Mike Merles, Chris Lindsay, Chris Perkins, uh, Satine Phoenix, Rudy Rutenberg, uh, and uh, Richard Witters, I think, will also be there. Uh, There'll be tons of folks. So uh, we'll be broadcasting 
broadcasting back and forth between here and there. You can donate to our Extra Life pages. Go to extralife.com uh, uh, and search for me. Search for do you have a you don't have a page. You know you know you hate kids. I uh, do not. I all the other Dungeons and Dragons weekend. team. I keep guilting them How about dare it, you. and they need to. Well, you have a page. I'm not here that weekend. How dare you? I would have loved. You don't to have, have to be it. in the physical place to raise you, money for I'm children. I'm going to Palm Springs with my girlfriend. Well, you're really making this this sound better I, for this, you. This has been planned for a long time. Before kids needed to. <laughs> Way before. <laughs> I have made donations. I have donated to the cause. Her time and energy, just not on that weekend. Right. Uh, so you can combat uh, uh, the absence of Shelly support by going to tort- the DMs Guild uh, and buying the Tortle package. It's up It's up there right now. We've raised tons of money so far. All, a lot of the proceeds for Wizards of the Coast will go towards uh, uh, this Extra Life campaign. You get to play as a Tortle. You can't go wrong there, right? Uh, there's also one growing above. I'm sorry. I was, t- I was joking with you. It's a nice segue. Uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. Uh, one Grung Above, you can also get that in the Dungeon Masters Guild. Chris Lindsay put it up there. It's how you can play as a Grung in your home campaign, and it helps the kids. So uh, a Grung package is 5 bucks, and I think the total package is 10 bucks. Can't go wrong there. There's a there's a, uh, a T-shirt that you can get, also yes. designed by Emmy Tanji, uh, which is 25 bucks, and all those proceeds go towards uh, this total as well. And then as we get more and more up there, we will unlock more previews from Xanathar's Guide to Everything, which is coming out. In game stores November 10th, out wide everywhere November 21st. Uh, it is a very cool uh, supplement that has tons of information on playing new subclasses within uh, the Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition framework. Uh, each class has at least two subclasses, new ones to it. Uh, 27 new ones in total. We'll be repeating four from other sources uh, as well. Tons of stuff in there new spells, new Dungeon Master uh, uh, things that you can try out. It's a great book. Um, the a, uh, alternate cover is only available in game stores on November 10th, designed by Hydro 74, but you can get the regular cover, which is also a really badass cover uh, everywhere uh, after those supplies run out. Uh, Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms is an awesome game. Check it out on Steam Early Access. You can play as the Force Grey Lost City of Omu characters. Speaking of which, they are in um, every Monday night at 5 p.m. Pacific time. And there's going to be a special show November 18th in Brooklyn. You can get tickets to go see it in if you're in the New York area. Uh, you might even be able to do a special high-priced package in which you can get a copy of Xanathar's Guide to Everything before anybody else can. Whoa. Uh, well, actually, that's not true because other people will have it out by then. So you won't get it before anyone else can. But you will get a copy of that book, which is pretty cool. Uh, the, with the package. The 19th? Is that Saturday or No, it's Sunday? 18th. 18th, 18th is a Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, okay. um, Yeah, because it's the same weekend as PAX Unplugged. Right, so 17th. you're going to be at PAX Unplugged. I'm going to be at PAX Unplugged. Are you going to be there? Yeah. What are you going to do there? Just wander. Yeah, you got, there's no reason for you to be there? I'm going to do some um, uh, betrayal at Baldur's Gate demos. Nice. Yep, in the D&D area. Demo it up. Demo it up. People are going to love it. Maybe talk about some stuff. Nice. That would be really cool to talk about. <laughs> It'd be so cool. We're dropping hints left and right. Nobody knows what we're talking vague about, but podcasting. we know we're vaguing. We're, we're va- vague, not voguing. <laughs> well, we're vaguing, vaguing and voguing. <laughs> vaguing, voguing. Uh, Tales from Candlekeep: Tomb of Annihilation is also possible. It is the digital version of this board game that we'll be talking to Kevin about today. Uh, it has got some uh, uh, fun stuff. It's more of a single player uh, way to play the Tomb of Annihilation game uh, right. and interact with that. So it's kind of yeah. fun. Yeah, and you can get better and better. It's but got tons of replayability. Just want to get away and do some tactical Dungeons and Dragons play. That's what Tales from Candlekeep Tomb of Annihilation can do for you. It's on Steam right now. Uh, Go check it out. It's at a much lower price point. You can follow them at Tales Candlekeep. Um, And uh, I think that's everything I'm going to hit today. Oh, good for you. Right? We want to get you on out of here. Yes. Let's do it. All, all right. right. Well, first of all, we can't do it right now because we got to do a segment. Can we do a segment first? Totally. Bing and bong it up. Make it happen. Mitro. Mitro. That segment really just, uh, uh, I feel like I know more. Right in the heart. And I, I, I want to learn, like, additional so information. inspiring. Yeah, like you want to follow up and yes. get to know more. I want more. It's like click to learn more. Yes. From Starship Where's, Troopers. Where is the click to learn more? I think you can do it right here on the Twitch. You can just click. click. So good. I know, right? I, yep. You know, you can watch us record these live on twitch.tv slash dnd. Why wouldn't you watch Do you watch? Have you watched it yet? No. Nope. No, but you can out there. Uh, and you can subscribe for only five bucks no. on our Twitch channel. And all that, st- all those stuff also goes to improving all the programming on here. Once Did I was looking that? for an, no, but my God, subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> you were going to go straight into an anecdote and I, I interrupted you. I was going to, uh, 
I was looking for another video on Twitch, an archived, yeah. and I saw like a screen grab of this, of Dragon Talk. Yeah. And I was like, oh, God, no. You couldn't look at it? What? I but just saw so... like this like slouchy, hunchback, bad posture thing. Oh, yeah, is that what you, do you think I looked like and that? And then I saw me. <laughs> <laughs> Which was glorious and so it's like angels singing. There was like yellow light, a halo behind oh, I you. I could barely see my face for that glowing. You have a very angelic costume on right now. Yeah, I don't think it, you won't be able to, you know, see it in. I don't in think it's probably form. translating. You well. can only get it on the Twitch. So right? that's another reason to subscribe to Twitch. Exactly, because you can see it in all of its glory. Right. Exactly. And Greg is wearing a, is a figure skating costume. <laughs> It's true. From his days. Yeah, that Nathan is going to Photoshop me on a figure skating costume. Now. Oh, yeah. Thanks for that. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, you can always watch us there. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to call up uh, uh, Kevin Wilson and talk about his design of the Tomb of Annihilation board game right about now. All right. Dunzo. Beep, boop. You're out of here. Peace out, homie Later, J. Gator. Those of you on the Twitches, we're going to do. Hang it. I'm not, uh, let's do it. Ow! <laughs> that hurt. That was a that was snacky a smack. stinger. Ooh, uh, we're gonna take a little break here. We're gonna run some ads. New thing which we like to do here. Uh, if you subscribe, you won't have to get any ads. Uh, and I'll be back with uh, Matt Cernet to do some lore you should know segments. Uh, we're gonna do two today. I think we're gonna do the Shadowfell uh, and uh, and also talk about Stranger Things a bit in that oh, one there and the in the, the space between. What is that? What's it called? The, the in between. The, the upside down. The upside down. We're gonna talk about that a bit. Uh, as well as uh, lycanthropes for all you werewolves out there for Halloween. Sound like a plan? All right, well, we're going to take a quick break and do it now.